Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity uh, to share with you this evening. Uh, my thanks to the people of Colorado for the great honor of being able to serve you over the last six years, uh, 10 years, including the House of Representatives. I want to thank all the incredible supporters across the state of Colorado who fought so hard for this evening, too. The incredible staff in my personal office and the incredible team on the campaign. Thanks to all of you for the work that we did, and of course, to my family. To Jamie, to Thatcher, to Caitlin, I can't thank you enough for the incredible support that you have been over these many years and the work that we have done together. And to my mom and dad and sister and family who are with us tonight, thank you for your incredible service. Six years ago, I set out to accomplish things for all four corners of the state of Colorado, uh, to make sure that we had a chance to fight for our economy, our environment, for energy, for education. Over the last six years, I was able to become the third most bipartisan member of the United States Senate, to pass more legislation into law than the entire Colorado congressional delegation combined. We fought hard to create an economy that was growing, that was creating jobs with tax cuts and regulatory reforms that led to wage growth and record low unemployment rates, to create more concurrent dual enrollment opportunities for children across Colorado's high schools, uh, to provide more opportunities for minorities in education in STEM fields, to make sure that when it came to energy that we boosted not only our traditional energy production and created jobs in every nook and cranny of our state, but that we had opportunities for renewable energy as well, saving the production tax credit working hard on solar tax credits to save them during the 2017 tax cuts to make sure that we increased funding for the National Renewable Energy Laboratory by nearly 50% over the last several years. We moved the Bureau of Land Management headquarters to Colorado, opened up U.S. Space Command in Colorado Springs, began to fulfill the promise that John F. Kennedy made to, to begin construction on the Arkansas Valley Conduit, a promise that he made nearly 50 years ago that we broke ground on just a month ago. Those opportunities for the people of Colorado are real. And in the midst of a global pandemic, we fought for the relief that Colorado desperately needed, making sure that we had the tests and the equipment that this state had to have in order to get through our pandemic together. And we will get through this pandemic together. A moment ago, I spoke to Senator-elect John Hickenlooper to congratulate him on his victory tonight, uh, to welcome him to the United States Senate and to make sure that he knows I will support him in this transition any way that I can to make sure that it's as smooth as possible and we will assist him with any questions that he might have as he navigates this new role. And please understand to all the people who supported our efforts tonight that his success is Colorado's success and our nation and our state need him to succeed. We need to be united together. So again, thanks to the tireless volunteers who it came together from all four corners of our state. It was during the beginning days of the pandemic when I received a letter from someone that I really wasn't sure who it was. I opened it up. Inside this letter was a pair of pliers, uh, and it was a unique thing to include, so I, of course, read the letter, and it was from a soldier who I had visited at Walter Reed Hospital. It just so happened that this soldier was from my hometown of Yuma, Colorado. I didn't think I knew him when the Department of Defense first told me that he had been wounded in Afghanistan and had lost his right arm. But the second I walked into that room at the hospital, I knew exactly who he was. I knew who his family was, I knew who his parents were and his grandparents. And I shared the story of his ancestors that my grandfather had told me that his grandparents or great-grandparents would walk into our family farm equipment business, they would pick up a pair of pliers and they would test their strength and he would grab them, he would squeeze them, and they would snap the pin and the pliers to see whether or not they were good enough to buy. And I told this young soldier who had just lost his arm that story. And in this letter, with that pair of pliers, he wrote to me that I had come to visit him, that his ancestors were, apparently wouldn't buy a pair of pliers unless they stood up to their strength. But he kept that story with him. For the last five years, he trained with that pair of pliers that he took with him to remind him of what it took to regain his strength, to train his non-dominant arm, to be his new dominant arm. And he's now the only amputee to teach special forces in this country. And he finished this letter with this. Sometimes our tools break, sometimes it's our fault. Sometimes they're not flat sturdy to begin with. Sometimes these tools have just been used to the point of failure. Every time, though, what really matters is what we do once that tool 
is broken. We fix it. We get a new one. Or we improvise something better. Either way, we figure out how to finish the job because people are depending on us to get it done. No matter what the outcome of any election is, our nation will always be extraordinary because of people like Captain Duval. And know that no matter how things turn out, we must always figure out how to finish the job because people are depending on all of us to get it done. As Ronald Reagan once said, the trail was long, but the company was always the best. To the people of Colorado, thank you for this great honor to serve you. This nation's better days are ahead of us, and let none of us forget that. God bless the great state of Colorado and these great United States of America.